a little thing just this evening, so we're going to practice it again. So listen close.
235 in the red book. Page 235. Appreciate you for coming out. Appreciate the choir and the youth for what they've done and what they're working on. And we want to keep them busy, keep them working for the Lord. Amen. Amen. We do appreciate you, but we always like to give everybody an opportunity to serve the Lord. So maybe somebody tonight's got a song on your heart, something you'd like to sing or do for the Lord this evening. Maybe a word or a testimony before we go on. Glad to be here, brother. Appreciate you, brother. Anybody else? Appreciate that. Anybody else tonight? Something on your heart? Hearts and minds are clear. Then we're going to open our Bibles up over to the book of St. John, chapter number 21. St. John, chapter number 21. When you find your place, if you're able, please just let us just stand to your feet and give a good shout of amen. Let no way I know you're there. I know you're still awake. Because half the time we... We sit around like we're asleep. Amen. 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 St. John chapter number 21. And we're going to begin to read it verse number 1. The Bible says, And after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on, the, and on this wise showed he himself. And there, there were there together Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel of the uh, Nathaniel of Canaan in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples with uh, two other uh, two others of his disciples. And Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. And they say unto him, 
we also go with thee. And they went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that, the, and that night they caught nothing. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, dear Lord, to humble ourselves before thee. Lord, thank you for another day and another opportunity to gather out into thy sight and into thy presence. And Lord, I know tonight, dear God, there's nothing that we can do or say within us that might help anybody. But, Lord, I know tonight that you're able to supply according to every need. I know tonight, dear God, that there's things going on in people's lives that we don't know about. I know there's things that we may not understand. But, God, I know you do. You're able to take care of each and every one of them. I pray tonight, dear God, you give us messages for this hour. Not for next week, not for last week, but, Lord, for right now. And I pray, dear God, that you help us to see that and understand that. Amen. 
Amen. Uh, they seem blind, come as uh, blind, people born blind at birth. Uh, never saw a day in their life. Uh, they saw that happen. Uh, they've heard about seeing the things happen, seen families uh, that were broken and falling apart. Uh, I mean, had children that was possessed with demons. Uh, have seen families mended and put back together. Uh, not only that, uh, they've just witnessed uh, over here in John. Uh, you find out uh, that not only is that a late chapter number 11, I believe it is, uh, you find out over there uh, that they saw Lazarus uh, raised from the dead after four days in the ground. Uh, God has done a miracle there, uh, done great things. They saw something, didn't they? They saw some things come to class. They saw Jesus just hung on a cross, put in a tomb. Rose on the third day. Now, from John chapter number 21, verse number 1, he said, And again, Jesus showed himself unto us. They had done already after these things. He showed himself again to the disciples. They saw all these things happen. They saw firsthand for Christ defeating death, hell, and the grave. You know what they did? You know what they decided to do? When all these things happened, after they'd seen all these miracles, after they'd seen everything and heard everything that Christ had to say, you know what they did? They went fishing. The Bible said there that they were gathered together, some of the disciples there, and Peter being the ringleader. Peter being the ringleader of them all right there. He said, now people, now I'm going to do it. I, I saw all these things happen. I, I saw all these things come to pass. And now I think I'll just go fishing. Amen. Hey, they got me to wondering in our lives. I wonder how many times in our lives. Hey, we saw God do miracle after miracle. We saw God do things in our lives that only God could have corrected. That only God could have mended. That only God's help could have fixed the thing, the problem, the issue that we had. All for us. Only for us to go fishing. And Jesus did tell them. Jesus did tell them. He said, I'll make you fishing for men. And they wasn't fishing for men. The Bible said there that when they, they saw all these miracles, they did that. They did that and what they used to do. Amen. They did that which what was comfortable to the old flesh. They had Jesus there with them for a long time. They just saw all the things happen, uh, and yet they decided they wanted to go out there and they wanted to go fishing. Amen. Uh, you know what happened when they went out there? They went fishing. Uh, they went out there, uh, and they didn't catch a sinking thing. Amen. Uh, they didn't catch one thing after they toiled all night long. Uh, how did it work out? Now, you want to know why? Uh, listen, let me tell you something. Little devil's got big plans for a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people can be here tonight, uh, but yet they're out fishing. Amen. Uh, they may not be on a lake. Uh, they may not be on a creek bank. Uh, but I promise you they're out fishing uh, of their own kind. Uh, I'm glad tonight uh, that you and I uh, are here in this house tonight. Uh, and we can get uh, what God wants us to have. Many people I talk to right now have given up and went back on God. Not what they used to be. Not serving the way they used to serve. I tell you right now, we don't have time for that. We don't have time to go fishing. Amen. We don't have time to go out there and waste. We don't have time to listen. I physically and mentally speaking, now, I'm not telling you that fishing is wrong. Amen. But here's what I want to tell you. Don't allow something to come between you and the Lord. Now, don't allow those things to, to take you away from God's house. Hey, I've been that. Now, I've allowed sports and other things to have me a priority in my life when it should have been God first. Amen. Now, hey, we say God first with our mouth, but our actions do not replicate that. Now, they do not show that. Now, hey, I'm telling you,
scriptures. I believe after this point, you won't find another time in the book. You won't find another answer, another scripture in here where Peter went back fishing after that. I can tell you right now, that day Peter went fishing and caught nothing. It wasn't long until the Lord showed up and he started catching something. Why? Because he told him to cast the net on the right side. I'm telling you today, we got to get things right in our lives before we can get a hold of God.
here. Uh, this old King James Bible, uh, hey, I tell you, it's important. Uh, it ought to be an important piece of your life. Uh, it ought to be important every day. Uh, we shouldn't go a day without picking it up. Uh, we ought to know things in it. Uh, we ought to know how to navigate the Bible. Thank you. 
You know what they did? Pointed the finger at their spouse. And when I didn't believe that, they started pointing it at the spouse's family. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Look, they, if I had to believe that, they wouldn't stop. They went on down to somebody lived down the road. Amen. I'm just telling you, no devil will do everything he can. Now, hey, he'll give you every excuse under the sun. Now, thank God they made it. Amen. Especially because yeah, he needed somebody to run the stand. Didn't do it no good to show up, did he? <laughs> Amen. Look. Here I tell you, the old devil do everything he can to keep us out of church. Yeah. He'll keep us to give us every opportunity to lay out to keep from serving him. Here we go. The Bible tells us to forsake not the assembling of yourselves again as a matter of some harm. Listen, he said, but exhort, he said, but exhorting one another in so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now, hey, it's important to become the church uh, that we might get fed or we might get some help. Hey, man, look, they said a lot of things that we should be doing. A lot of things and a lot of things that we should be going through. But yet we're out there fishing and doing the things of the world. I promise you, as this week comes around, I'm going to hurry up. I'm going to try to get you out of here. I was thinking, you know what? There's so many things the devil will try to keep you from doing. Well, look, the preacher's going to get personal now. Look, you see this plate right here? I remember a time in my life when I avoided that plate coming through. Didn't you? Man, I, I, that thing, you, it was hard to put money in that thing. Let me tell you what I found out in my life. You know the de what the devil will do? He'll give you a fishing hole every time that plate comes around from tithing. Oh, he's done got in my wallet now. Let me tell you something. I don't care about your wallet. I don't care how much you make. I don't care how much you tithe. But here's what I want to tell you is for me and my house, what I have found out. There's times in my life and probably not that far long ago, you can look at our finances and you know, you, you know me, anything about me, you know I am a spreadsheet guy. Hey, you can take that spreadsheet, you can fill it out, and you look and put my numbers that's coming, the money I'm bringing in versus the money that's going out, and you'll scratch your head and say, that sheet don't work. And I'll say, you're exactly right. It don't. On paper, it makes no sense. On paper, it makes no sense. Listen, you can keep your money, and you can try, try to manage it yourself. Or you can give God what's his, and stand back and watch what he does. Amen. 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 Listen, all he's asking for is a little tithing. What you do in the offering is that and above what you tithe. Amen. Amen. Uh, hey, I promise you, he'll bless everything if we'll get out of it. Uh, i tell you something else. Uh, I was thinking this afternoon how easy it is to get caught up uh, in the things and talk and the, the things of the people that you're around. This mouth, these words that come out of this mouth, that is important out there in the world. We'll talk about things of the world. We'll talk about everything under the sun. But how often do we talk about the Lord? How often do we give it to Him? The Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter 4 and verse number 6, uh, He said, let your speech be always uh, with grace, seasoned with salt, uh, that you may know how, how you ought to answer. In other words, the words that come out of this mouth, they ought to come from heaven. They ought to come from the same heart that God has. Why? Because we have the same, should have the same heart that he does. Amen. There's a lot of things that go out with go fishing when it comes time to get around a crowd, isn't it? When it comes time to be around a crowd, <coughs> when it comes time to visit or to tell somebody about the Lord, I wonder how many times that we just go fishing instead of talk, doing what God would have us to do. God impressed upon your heart. He impressed upon your heart to talk to somebody. Look, call me. I'll go with you. Call me. If I can't go, I promise you, one of these brothers right here, one of these deacons, they'll go with you. We'll make a time. We'll make sure that we get somebody to go with you. Hey, but I'm telling you what, here's the main thing you need to realize. If God impressed you to go, he wasn't calling me to go. I'll be glad to go. But just like when God called Moses, Moses said, I can't, so he sent Aaron with him. Moses still had to do the work for the miracles to happen, amen? Look, 
be, don't go fishing. Don't give up. Go do what God wants you to do. Listen, that's important that when we choose our friends and the things people we hang around with and the places we go, things we do. Okay, I'm going I'm to I'm finish up. Here's what I say. We was over there at that pond fishing today. Riley was having himself a blast. He was having a good time. He was catching fish about every three or four, five minutes. And just catching some fish. Nothing, nothing real big. Well, some was big, but nothing major. We was getting ready to leave, and I told him, I said, I've got to go home and study. He said, just one more cast, Papa. One more cast. Do you know how many last casts he made? I quit counting. I finally told Melissa, I said, throw the bait in the pond. She threw the bait in the pond, and he still cast two or three more times. Finally told him I had to go. I had to go. I wonder how many times that God's told us that we need to go. I wonder how many times we hung around and said, but Lord, one more cast, uh, one more time. Uh, I wonder how many times we should have made our way down to an altar. Uh, I wonder how many times we should have picked up that book. Uh, I wonder how many times we should have got down and prayed. Uh, I wonder how many times we should have went and told somebody about God. Uh, but yet we wanted one more cast uh, out in the world. Today, it's time to start fishing for him. As every head bowed and every eye closed, every Christian praying, every heart searching. I ask you tonight, how is it with you? How is it with you? Tonight you have an opportunity. Where are you at in your, in, in your walk with Christ? Where are you at? <coughs> are you right where God wants you to be? Have you got some room to move up? I'm not asking for hands to be raised or a lot of questions tonight. But I do want to know this. If you're here tonight and you've never been saved, would you be honest with yourself and honest with God? Just lift your hand up, put it right back down and say, pray for me. Pray for me. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, preacher, I'm not really sure. Just pray for me. Pray for me. Maybe you're here tonight you've got something on your heart, somebody you need to pray about, something you want, somebody you want to pray for. Altar's open for anyone for any reason. You just want to come. You just want to come. I'm not going to give a long invitation tonight. Matter of fact, she's going to play one more verse. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Altar's open tonight for anyone for any reason. Where are you fishing at? Has God told you to get out of that pond? Get back down to doing what he wants you to do and fishing for what he wants you to fish for. Back to being fishers of men. Then come. Then come. I'm going to put myself on this altar tonight. Because I need the Lord. I want to be what he'd have me to be. Anybody else want to come before we pray? Jason, you pray for us. Man, we appreciate you tonight. Maybe somebody's got a word or a testimony on your heart before we close. <clears throat> Hearts and minds clear. Let's all stand to our feet. Do be much in prayer one for another.
I'm going to give you a piece of advice. Don't ever call the sound guy out. He'll cut you off or let you know you ain't on. Amen. We appreciate you. Do remember somebody. Tell somebody about the Lord this week. Shake somebody. Say, tell me, love them. God bless you.